Howdy. Where are you from? If you don't know, then take a DNA test. It could tell you. But then again, maybe not. I know. I'm always the one to bring bad news about DNA. I told you that you don't have any DNA from Charlemagne, and that disappointed a lot of people. I told you you weren't related to that Indian princess, and your DNA is not showing it either. And that probably disappointed some people. Now I'm going to tell you that probably one of the biggest things that is pushed on DNA testing might not be telling you what you think it is. And what is that? Well, every testing company gives you some ethnicity results an idea of where your ancestors were from. And they vary between some saying it's a few hundred years ago to some saying it's a few thousand years ago. But let's take a look and see where I'm from. So you can see here at Family Tree DNA, I am from the British Isles, 93%. That's pretty solid. It also says there's another 6% from Eastern Europe. Okay, not bad. What do other people say? Well, at 23andMe, it says I'm 99% European. And when it breaks it down some, well, there's 42% from the British and the Irish. But wait a second. They said I was 93% from the British Isles. And this is only half of that. And then there's another 18% German and a little bit of Scandinavian put in there. And then this other great big broad Northwest European. So maybe if we just add all that into the British and French and German and Scandinavian altogether, we get closer to that 93%. So you might be able to say that these two are pretty comparable. Well, let's go over to my heritage now. My heritage is saying that, well, I'm 62% English and another 34% Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. Well, that does add up to like 97%, which is a little bit more than what Family Tree DNA said, but it's still in the ballpark. It has some finish though. Finnish? Yeah, I didn't see Finnish, unless Scandinavian is Finnish. And maybe if the Eastern European is Scandinavian? Hmm. Well, let's go over to Ancestry DNA and see what they have to say. Well, 46% from Great Britain? Ah, oh, that's, that's like really close to what Ancestry said. They said I was 42% British and Irish, so that must be good. Oh, wait, there's another 12% from Ireland, though. So that would be 58% British and Irish, which is, yeah, that's a little bit more than what 23andMe said. And it's a lot less than 93% that Family Tree DNA said. And a lot less than the 97% that my heritage said. Well, what about the rest of it? Well, they have, whoa, Scandinavia, 23%. Uh-oh. There was no Scandinavian there. There was six Scandinavian there, and there was maybe 2% Scandinavian there? And now we're at 23% Scandinavian? Well, some of you may be saying, this is probably just because they all have different tests and different things that are looking at, except that these three are all the exact same test. I tested at 23andMe and then upload, uploaded my results to Family Tree DNA and then uploaded those exact same results to MyHeritage. So these three companies are all actually looking at the exact same data. Now they're obviously interpreting it different. Ancestry DNA, I took a separate test, but it's still for me. My DNA shouldn't be changing. So in essence, they all should have roughly the exact same information. And yet we have a great big disparity here between all these different companies. So why is that? Well, let me give you three basic reasons of why you might be getting results that aren't what you thought. So the first issue is what is ethnicity? Now, most DNA companies will break it down like you saw into some sort of country level, at least in Europe. And from a genetics and evolutionary standpoint, an ethnicity would be defined as a common set of characteristics that predominate in a certain population. However, these by no means are exclusive to that population. For instance, the Irish are known for their red hair, and there's a larger portion of their population that has red hair than anywhere else in Europe. But red hair can be found throughout populations all over Europe. 
So defining an ethnicity by characteristics or the DNA that codes for those characteristics is not exact because there's a lot of overlap. And that's one thing you'll see in several of the companies when they actually map out where that ethnicity they say is coming from is there's a lot of overlap between those ethnicities. Now the second issue is, I've brought this up several times before, you only have DNA from 120 of your ancestors in any generation. Back to the sixth generation, this isn't a problem because there's less than 120 ancestors in that generation. But by the seventh generation, you have 128 ancestors. So there's eight of those ancestors that you got no DNA from. Now that's not too bad, that's still about 95% of your ancestors. But when you jump one more generation, back to your eighth generation, it jumps to 256, and you still only have 120 ancestors of those that you inherited DNA from. And so now you're less than 50%. So when these companies are looking at your ethnicity and they're saying that it goes back just a few hundred years, that could be 10 generations, in which case you're only looking at the DNA from about two or 3% of all of your ancestors from that generation. Now, all things being equal, it should be a good approximation of where your ancestors are from. But probability doesn't always work like that. Sometimes the long shot wins the race. So you may have had one or two or several black ancestors if you had ancestors in America that intermingled with slaves at the time. But they may not show up in your ancestry now. So while it shows that myself am almost 100% European, that by no means means that I don't have any other ethnicities that were a part of my ancestors. It's just not gonna be able to be found from DNA. And the third issue, and this one's a little tricky one. Whenever we're trying to decide what ethnicity it is based off of your DNA, what we need is we need to compare it to a reference population. The problem is we don't have a DNA set from say, people in Great Britain 500 years ago, it doesn't exist. What we do have is we do have some of their descendants that have tested for DNA. Likewise, we don't have sub-Saharan African DNA from different countries from 500 years ago or a thousand years ago. What we do have is we do have some of their descendants. And so we need to make a reference population. How do we make this reference population to compare others to? Really, we gotta look at the paper genealogy that some people have done and determine how long they've lived in that area, how much of their ancestry is from that area. So for instance, in the United States, it is a colonial nation where lots of people from Europe as well as other places around the world have come to live, but there is a Native American population. And that Native American population is very small compared to all the rest of the population. And so if we're trying to find Native American DNA, we need to find some people who haven't necessarily intermingled with the immigrant population over the last 400 years. That is really difficult to find. And so when we're looking at our ethnicities through these DNA reports, what you shouldn't be focused on is you shouldn't be focused on what country it's telling you you might be from or that your ancestors might be from, but really look at the much broader area. Now, for most people, you probably know whether your ancestors are predominantly from Europe or from Africa or from Asia. For some of you, it may be a surprise that, hey, there's some African that shows up in a significant portion that you didn't know about. That should give you a clue of some places to look later on. But when you get down to a level of what country specific, it's not going to be that accurate. One, because there's so much overlap, in particular in Europe, between different ethnicities as they're defined in these different companies, that it's not gonna really give you much information to go and do research on. I hope I didn't ruin your day by telling you that the ethnicity that all these companies are telling you may not be that accurate, but that's just the way that science works sometimes. If you like this video, please click subscribe and give us a thumbs up and tell all your friends about us. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer those questions on Family History Fanatics.